In this video, we're talking about React 18, specifically the addition of transitions and how to use them with suspense for data fetching. Stick around. That's what my transition would be like if I had a transition, but I don't. So welcome to another day of React Holiday on my channel. I'm grateful that you're here and I'm grateful for another holiday season. I don't know how many of these I actually have left, so it's great to spend one of them with you. Today we're talking about suspense and specifically transitions and how transitions get used in suspense uh, when doing stuff like data fetching. Now, it's very likely that this stuff won't apply to you long term because it's going to get wrapped up in frameworks and um, you know libraries that you can use for data fetching. However, I think data fetching is the best way to understand what a transition is supposed to be. Um, and it kind of leads to this discussion of like, what is a transition? Transition is this new capability that React um, concurrent mode unlocks. And so now that we have it, we can use these things called transitions. So we have things like, you know, state and components and, you know, concepts like that inside of React. Well, now we're adding a transition. And what it does is it allows us to be a little bit more complex about the UI that we present to users when we have delays on the network or delays based on our compute power. If we have like a really slow update or some really um, intensive process. Now, we're not going to talk about compute today just because it's a little trickier to set up examples for this. But I've set up an example for suspense that I think demos the concept uh, really cleanly. So let's dive into the code right over here. Now, what I have here is a component. It's about, oops, sorry for the jerking around there, um, 93 lines. Now, these 93 lines are everything that you need to put together in order to get suspense running inside, suspense for data fetching run inside of an app. Again, you'll probably have a framework for this down the road, but I think this is a, the minimum viable demo for how transitions work. So we have a fairly um, simple component here. We have a um, heading. We have a paragraph telling what someone telling someone what they need to do. Um, we have an error boundary, and we have a suspense boundary with a fallback that says loading Pokemon, and then a Pokemon detail Pokemon. Now, what this all amounts to in the end is, you know, we see all of our content here. Uh, if I hit next, we'll fetch the next Pokemon, we see that fallback loading Pokemon until the next one comes. Now, um, in this particular app, I've actually delayed the response by 500 milliseconds so that we can see everything that's happening. Now, what else do we need to know about this app? What are the rest of the lines? Well, the rest of the lines are interesting. So first, we have a um, suspensify function. Now, you can find a bunch of these on NPM. I decided to write my own based on the experimental React docs. They use something exactly like this. What this does is fairly simple, even though the code is kind of complex. What we're doing is we're returning an object with a read function on it, or some the function that we can call. Now, this will relay various states to our error and suspense boundaries. Okay, so this component needs to relay its internal state to these boundaries in order for the fallback or the error to take effect. And this is exactly what this does. This is generic for any type of promise. Um, and it will do it will fulfill the interface that it needs to in order to communicate with these surrounding boundaries. I know it's a little kind of like, you know, gobbledygooky, but that's what this does. It's like, uh, I don't know, 23 lines of code. And um, that's all it does is just connected. It connects a promise to suspense and error boundaries. That's it. Now, uh, let's uh, jump to the bottom. At the bottom, we have an error boundary, very vanilla stock error boundary. If you um, get a console warning saying to go to a route for an error boundary, this is exactly what you're going to get, um, except for we console log instead of log to a error service. Okay. Now, we have a fetch Pokemon function, and it's just going to take an ID starting with one. And uh, like I said, we uh, sleep for a little bit to make sure that we see a little bit of a delay no matter what on these Pokemon. So let's look at the Pokemon detail component. 
what is going on here? Well, first, we kick off the whole thing when this app starts, right? Before anything else, we um, get an initial Pokemon. We call our fetch Pokemon with um, one and um, then wrap it in our suspensify function. If you remember, that returns an object with a single function called read on it. And that's going to allow us to basically pull for the status of this promise. Okay, so here we're keeping a little bit of internal state. So we're going to uh, create some new state here, put our initial Pokemon on it. Uh, get our Pokemon resource and a function to set that Pokemon resource. Um, our Pokemon is going to be that Pokemon resource, and then we're going to call read. Because remember, this Pokemon resource is a promise. Um, I don't know if this resource language will stick around, but that's what experimental versions of React called these. So in this function, we have an article. We have a heading that uses our Pokemon name. So this is the resolved object once we have a Pokemon. Um, and then we have a button, and what this button does is it calls uh, fetch Pokemon with the next ID. So we use Pokemon.ied, the current one that we have, and increment it by one. Um, this all gets wrapped up in Suspensify, and then uh, we call our set Pokemon resource with it. So it's a Suspensified promise from fetch Pokemon with the ID of the current Pokemon. Um, and then this just says, this just like says next. Now it's super important that you see that the read happens inside of this component. So you might be used to thinking about fetching, having some type of big if else block. And, you know, if it's this state, do that thing. If it's another state, do another thing. In suspense, we're actually interacting with the boundaries, which is a very different thing. So where that happens is right here when we call read. Now, if we have a Pokemon, it's going to render this, this component. Right. However, if we don't have a Pokemon, it's going to, depending on the internal state, whether or not it's an error or uh, pending, um, going to enact one of these boundaries. So this is success. This is pending. And this is an error. So I hope you got that. Now that you do, we're going to talk about transitions. That's kind of like the meat and potatoes of what we're what, what we're getting to. So we have our minimum viable suspense app here. That's what all, all this is. Um, and next, I want to talk about transitions. So let's look at the experience that we have right here. So we're looking at this, and every time we click this, we get that same fallback, and then eventually the next thing comes in. Now, this is a little bit jarring because, you know, every time we hit next, the whole view kind of gets replaced with this fallback text. Now, we could go through the effort of constructing as a very similar view that takes up the same amount of height and width and whatnot, and then replace it with that. But suspense makes it so that we don't have to. So check this out. If we go into here, where we set the new Pokemon resource with our suspensified fetch Pokemon <laughs> promise, um, we can do something else here. We're going to return a React start transition give it an anonymous function oops anonymous function take that place that there and hit save okay so all we've done is we wrapped what we had here before with react start transition and put it inside of a function okay now let's see what happens now so we go back over to our app hit next and that's really interesting we didn't see that fallback loading state now let me stop this and oop, I don't see a refresh button. Um, let's see, save. Okay. I don't know if you could see that, but when I refresh this, you could see that in the initial state, we still got that initial loading Pokemon fallback, right? Because we didn't have an existing state. But once we have a Pokemon, we have this view, and I can click this button, and it holds on to that stale view until the next Pokemon resolves. That's super cool because we have a much less jarring experience on the UI. Super neat, right? Okay, now, it's not super great, though, because we don't have a lot of feedback that something's happening, right? So I click this, and it's like, okay, that's a little bit of time to wait. Like, what what happened? We see that the button was pressed. We see a little bit of feedback just from the button, but the UI kind of holds on in a really weird way. Now, this is where, um, looks like I lost some uh, font size there. So this is where 
um, we get into a more complex transition and we can use use transition, uh, which is very similar to start transition, but slightly different. So here we can use use transition um, like a hook. So react use transition. Oh my gosh, transition. Okay. And the second part of this is going to be exactly what we have right now. So start transition. Okay, so we'll take this off. We'll take this React part now off now that we're using a hook to make our own transition. We can name this whatever we want, but for the sake of um, same things being the same thing, I want you to see that start transition is the same thing. So I'm going to save it just in this state. We're going to kind of ignore the first uh, part of this. Hit save, um, hit next, and we have the same exact experience as before. Start transition, same thing, same thing, same thing, whether you're using it in start transition or use transition. However, when we use use transition, we also get a Boolean that we can take um, and make some UI decisions with. So that's the first element on this array. Now, what can we do with this? Well, we can do a lot of stuff, but I'm gonna show you what we can do first. Um, let's just change the opacity of this based on our is pending Boolean. So if we have a transition and that transition is pending, what I want to do is set this to 0 0.5 opacity. And um, if it's if it's not pending anymore, then set it to set it to one, just let it be the, the, the full opacity that it was before. So save this. And let's see what we get in the UI. This is super cool. Let's make that a little bit more extreme. Uh, let's change that to two so we can, all, we can all see it. So as soon as I click this, this enters a pending state. So this transition is pending and we um, can use that to make some decisions about how to style this, um, which gives us an opportunity to show to the user that even though all this information is still there and it's still interactable, it is in a pending state. Something else is going to replace it shortly. Okay, so now that we have this, there's so many things that we can do with it. We've used is pending to style, but we can actually create elements with this and, and everything. Now, I'm going to leave that up to you as the enjoyer of this video, because we're going to cover that in the next part of the React.Holiday series. If you're not registered for that, go to React.Holiday and sign up with your email address. Um, it'll be awesome. So that's it. That's everything that we're going to cover today. You fully understand how a transition works and how you can use it inside of Suspense for data fetching. And hopefully you learned a little bit along the way about how to um, orchestrate uh, Suspense and error boundaries in your application. So I do hope that you will explore with this. I'll put a link to this in the description below. Uh, if you find this video fun and helpful, uh, feel free to give me a like. Uh, if you didn't like it, give me an unlike. That's fine. And uh, just tell me what you wanted to learn instead. And I'll try to do better next time. Um, yeah, if you're not doing anything this holiday season, uh, please join us in the uh, Lunch Dev Discord. It's a really awesome community of creative, compassionate, fun, and uh, interesting people at discord.gg slash lunchdev. I think you'll really like it. And uh, yeah, if you haven't registered for emails, react.holiday.com. And uh, I'll see you the next one.